Hey guys, Garrett here, and if you've been watching any of my videos, you know that I built my own house. I made a video right here as to why I built my own house, but many of you have asked the questions, how did you do it? So how could I afford it? How did I have the time to do it? And where did I get the skill to do it? So that's what this video is gonna be about. First, let's talk about money. I made a video on how I got free land right here, but what I didn't tell you in that video is that that front property that I did sell off, we had a lot of equity in that property. So we're able to take that cash and apply it towards our house. Well, that wasn't enough, so we went ahead and sold one of our rental properties as well. This provided us with most of the money that we needed, but it wasn't everything. I did have to borrow a little bit from my dad of which I paid back as soon as I possibly could plus anything that we could buy just with cash that we were earning at the time we did so the whole intent with this was to come out of this process completely debt free and this wasn't a process that we took on a whim this was something that we prepared for for a long time planned for and that's kind of one of the big takeaways of everything that I'm going to talk about if this is something you're planning to do you need to start years in advance next we're going to talk about time and I'm a licensed professional civil engineer and I've worked uh, in government basically local government for about 10 years and I left that back in 2015 but before I left for the previous four years I was building up my businesses on the side so I would work my day job and then at nights or weekends you know it was really long days I was buying assets and one of those asset classes was mobile homes I made this video here showing you what I do and I replicate it over and over again well by buying those mobile homes I was then able to buy a mobile home park and then as time went on I bought a rental house I bought some uh, one duplex which led to two which led to three and then another half duplex so as time was going on we're buying these assets and fixing them up and then getting them to where they are cash flowing really well so when I left work in 2015 I had the side businesses going and they were cash flowing and I wasn't allowed to leave work at least that's what my wife and I set up until I met certain benchmarks as far as income and while we were working up to this we were also slashing everything in our budget that we possibly could very very thrifty spenders and if we were going to buy something we paid as low as we possibly could for it so that put us in the position again I was able to transition out of work and basically working for myself and living off of the assets that I had bought well of course those assets do take time so we were working our butts off in 2015 and 16 to turn all of those units into good cash flowing properties and the nice thing is when you have these units and you've turned them you know when we go in we try to do everything at once so that when we do have to touch that unit again it's very minor as to what we need to do therefore it takes less time later on it also takes a heck of a lot less money later on too if you do it right right up front so that's what we spent a couple of years trying to get right and then I hit the point where we were going to either buy a house or build a house and our dream was to build a house but we just weren't sure if we were ready to take that leap but we went ahead and decided to so this is really how I got that time I transitioned out of work I got assets that were cash flowing for me so that I could step back and have my time to do what I wanted to do which was build that house and it took me two years to build this house and don't get me wrong there were some times that I had to step away from the house build to go work on some of those properties but that is one of the nice things about having business partners and my business partner is my dad and so he was able to take on the day-to-day -day side of things while I was off working on the house and since we put that time in in 2015 and 16 of getting those properties up and going they just weren't that bad to manage on his own while I was building the house well this leads us to the skill portion of it and like I said I am a licensed professional engineer but it doesn't mean that I know squat about building a house I've never built a house before this was my one and only house that I was ever going to build but as I mentioned earlier I own a bunch of other properties and I've just always been a doer so I like to do things myself 
So if they needed reno, I did it. And in previous personal residence that I've owned, I fixed those up myself. So I, I knew how to do a lot of the basics and probably a lot more of the advanced stuff as well and plumbing and electrical and that sort of thing. But I, again, I, I'd never built a house from the ground up. So was I qualified to do it? I don't know, I'd have probably said no, because again, I didn't have the experience, but I like to take on big challenges, and so I studied. And thankfully, we were not in a time crunch to where we needed this house right now. So again, this all started years before we ever actually broke ground. It was a process that happened, which gave me time to figure out what materials, what building methods, what do we want to incorporate into this house. It gave us lots of time to look at uh, the plans and figure out what we actually want. And as you go along, you just figure more stuff out. So then I've got the time to research all of this and decisions get made along the way. And then I know, okay, I need to figure out how to build in this manner. I've never built an ICF house before, but it's basically big old Legos. How hard can that be? Honestly, it's not that terribly hard. It's a matter of bracing. And a lot of this is just you start and then you figure it out. When it came to the ICF, what did I do? I read the instruction manual from beginning to end probably four different times before I ever actually started. I watched every video that I could possibly find on it and then I just started. And you know, most of this stuff is just logical. So if you are fairly logically thinking, you'll figure it out. There were a lot of things though that I was doing like the entire roof structure, which I, I was zero qualified to do that but it cost too much for me to hire someone else out to do it. It was one of those things I stressed about for a long, long time, but at some point you have to just put the pencil down, put the books down, and you just have to get up there and you figure it out. So while I may have known how to do more than the average person, I was definitely nowhere near the level of like a contractor. But as time goes on, you know, you make mistakes and that's fine. I made a whole video of the mistakes that I made on my build. But if you make a mistake, grieve about it for just, uh, I don't know, five minutes and then move on. Fix the mistake, learn from it. And that's the big takeaway here is you're going to learn more from your mistakes than you do your big uh, wins with this whole thing. So just keep showing up every single day. Remember that you're gonna learn something new probably every single day. And if it's something that you get completely stuck on, talk to anyone that will listen. Don't go to them with the attitude of, oh, I'm better than you, or I know better than you, or any of that kind of stuff. Go into it with a, a sense of humility, a sense of humbleness. And honestly, everyone will wanna help you at that point. So don't be afraid to make phone calls, call different contractors, or if you're working with some subcontractors and you're not sure who to hire for this next thing, talk to all those subcontractors that you have already hired, and a lot of them will have great contacts for people that they know do really quality work. Just keep an open mind and be thankful for the people that are helping you with your project as well as those that are giving you advice. And then in my case, I have to be super thankful to, for my entire family, my wife, because she was watching my son while I was building and then she had my daughter at the same time, my dad for helping me through a ton of this, my sister for helping me a bunch. I actually had a helper the vast majority of the time that was with me helping on that build. So without him, I don't know that I could have done it. Just enjoy the process, get your family involved, take lots and lots of pictures, and then you've got something that you built yourself, no one can take that away from you, and it's one of the coolest feelings that you can have. Make sure to hit that like button down below, as well as subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.